And we begin here at 530 tonight with a welcome headline for people who live, work or just spend time in the city of Buffalo. Violent crime went down last year to its lowest level in a long time. Now that's according to the Buffalo Police Department's annual report that was just released. And here are a couple of the big highlights. 2023 saw a 58% reduction in shooting homicides and overall shooting incidents we're down 28%. Gun crime has been a big focus. Now, nearly all violent crime categories saw a reduction last year, though. Homicides, rapes, robberies, and aggravated assaults pretty much even there, as you can see. Compared to the five-year average, last year saw a 19% drop in overall violent crime. That is all very good news. On the flip side, though, we saw another dramatic increase in property crimes. Burglaries and larcenies, you can see, uh, were pretty much flat, but car thefts more than doubled compared to a year before. And if you look at this chart, this goes back all the way to the year 2006. Look on the far right side. You can see that big increase there. We had nearly 3,000 or right around 3,000 stolen vehicles just in the city of Buffalo. Now we know this has been a big focus for police here in the Queen City, all over Western New York and really statewide. Actually, six months ago, the governor announced $55 million in state funds to help law enforcement. State police and other agencies, including the Crime Analysis Lab, have all been focused on assisting local departments to target those who are stealing vehicles. And joining me live here tonight is Buffalo Police Commissioner Joseph Grimalia. Police Commissioner, great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me in the studio. So a lot of positives in this report, and I want to talk to you about that, but let's start there with car thefts. Um, what should we make of, of these numbers? Um, and here we are, you know, halfway through March in 2024. Um, you were saying things are better than they were last year. Things are getting better. Yeah. Uh, right now, through the first couple of months of the year, our car thefts are down 38%, um, you know, but it's still too high. We look back prior to the pandemic numbers, we were usually good around a thousand stolen cars a year. You can see where we were last year. I think everybody knows the reasons for that. Talk to me about the, the tactics, what it is that you've been doing to, to try to tackle this. And, you know, we were talking earlier in our newsroom today and we've got a report coming up at six o'clock. I mean, there are signs up at gyms telling people don't leave your keys inside unlocked lockers because criminals are going there and taking keys. Um, a lot of people leave their cars unlocked, which makes them an easy target. Um, what do people need to know? Some of it seems like common sense, but there's still a lot of stolen cars. There are, but you know, we're still seeing a very high number of our Kias and Hyundais being the main cars that are stolen because of the issues that, that we have so widely uh, talked about. But uh, Prior to that, the only way a car was going to get stolen is, is with the keys. You had to have the keys. And we were finding too many people leave their keys in their car, their key fobs in their car. Uh, but you also have the issue of when someone leaves their car running and unattended, that's actually a violation of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law. Mm. You can and will be issued a summons for that. So you have to be cognizant of where your keys are, that they're locked up, and that you do not leave them in the car. In terms of some of those other numbers, again, the violent crime down significantly, especially gun crimes, and I know that's been a big focus of yours. I wonder if you can just react to that. And then also a number that stood out to me in the report, 250,000 total response calls essentially last year for the police department. You do the math and it's one every like, you know, 32 seconds. Uh, it really puts into perspective the the job of all this. It does, you know, and that call volume, it, it varies by day. Uh, in the winter months, you can see somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, maybe seven, 800 calls in a 24 hour period. And then you get into the peak of the summer and our officers are responding to well over a thousand, 12, 1300 calls, sometimes 1400 calls in a 24 hour period. So they're busy. Those are that 250,000 number is 911 calls, but it's also self-generated calls where the officers are out doing some proactive work, calling out on different things. So they're busy, they're, they're significantly busy. When we talk about our shootings and uh, our, our shooting crimes, our gun crimes, that's something that we put a significant focus on. We've worked very hard at it. Our patrol officers, our detectives are out there every day working very hard. And we have seen a 32% reduction in shooting victims, 58% reduction in shooting homicides, and a 44% overall reduction in our homicides. You know, those are significant numbers, but we talk percentages, but those are real people that are being affected by gun violence. Yeah, you, if you look at the chart, again, th these go back to, to 2006, the number of homicides is sort of off the charts. I mean, that's how low it is compared to previous years for 2023. It is, you know, uh, the last couple of years have been 
you know, pretty bad with the, with the number of homicides. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you, you, there are some homicides that we can affect, those shooting homicides, we can have an effect on those, like our shootings, uh, using the data-driven strategies that we are using, going after the, the, those that are involved in gun violence. We know how to go after those. Unfortunately, there are other types of homicides that occur, domestic homicides, you know, other uh, homicides that may occur inside of a home. There's not much that we can do about uh, having an impact on those, but obviously we still work very hard to do that. What is the uh, approach and the focus um, for your police department for this year? I know car thefts remains really high on the list, um, but you, you know, are the strategies working? Is it that you kind of keep going at what you're doing or are there new things we should anticipate? You know, our number one focus is, has always been and will continue to be community engagement, being involved in the community, doing things with our community, uh, building those levels of trust, having that relationship, and that's what the annual report really showcases. Uh, last year, I hired a social media video production specialist. Uh, fantastic hire, he's doing great work. He's putting videos out, brought all of our social media platforms together, a YouTube channel, but the, social, or the annual report this year has a lot of embedded videos from events that occurred, a lot of community events that occurred. It also showcases uh, different uh, specialty units and feature some of our officers. So we've embedded a lot of video into uh, that annual report this year because of the hire that we had uh, that enable us to do that. Um, finally, I'm almost out of time, but in terms of staffing, the last time you were here, we talked about re recruitment efforts. Um, you don't have the, the successes in fighting crime without the, the people out on the streets, right? It takes officers out on the street. Uh, we are, we're sitting pretty good. We've got a class of uh, 34 that are in the academy now and expected to graduate in June, begin their in-service training. So we, they will fully count for manpower by around October. Again, uh, a lot of good news in terms of fighting crime in this report and obviously stolen cars, a big focus moving forward. Joe Grimalia, the police commissioner for the city of Buffalo. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thank you. It.